Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a military wife tag and also a Q&A. And I'm doing this Q&A slash military tag because it has been a year since I did my last military tag. And so a lot of life has changed. There's a lot of new things that have been going on in our life. And so I wanted to update just a couple of questions that are different from our last tag. Um, if you have more questions, check out the last tag to just maybe have those answered. Um, but I'm just going to answer like four or five things that have changed from my last tag and then we'll get on into the Q&A questions. Um, an announcement that I do want to make before I get started is I think because of my last video you guys just kind of like emailed me and Instagram me all of this like ad advice questions and I've been getting a lot and it's amazing. Um, however, I went to Texas this past weekend and so a lot of those emails and Instagram messages I wasn't able to answer and so just so you know I will get to them today or within this week but know that I did see them um, and I'm getting to them as soon as I can um, so just be patient with me please but I will slowly get to them you know like by the end of today or the end of the week okay so to kick off our military tag the first question is how old am I and obviously within a year my age is going to change so today I'm 22 years old but in a few weeks I will be 23 years old which is so exciting but yeah the second question is how long have I been a military girlfriend and a military wife and my husband joined in 2013 and so I think I was a military girlfriend for about two years and then he asked me to marry him we got married and now I've been a military wife for two years so the girlfriend two years and now I've been a wife for two years and a few months. So the third question is how many deployments have you experienced? And this is our first deployment ever. We've never experienced a deployment before and this is our first and it's definitely, definitely been an experience. And the fourth and final question is what base do we live on? We currently live in Washington at Everett Base. It's a pretty small base. Um, most people from the internet do not live in Everett, which is so sad because I wish one of you guys lived in Everett, but you don't. You live everywhere else, <laughs> but we do live in Everett. Um, and so that's the final question for the tag. If you want to know more, um, my other tag from last year answers a little bit more questions about me and Connor and more about our life. Okay, so now we get into the Q&A, which is a lot of questions that you guys have asked me throughout the years and questions that you recently asked me and just a couple things for clarification and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so the first question that I get asked a lot, surprisingly, is what does MILSO stand for? And MILSO stands for Military Significant Other. It does not stand for Military Spouse. If you are a girlfriend for one day and you are a girlfriend to someone in the military, you have just become a MILSO. So know that you can't like become a MILSO like once you get married or like just none of that. You are a MILSO if you are dating or married to someone in the military. Okay, so the second question, Meredith Sharp asked, and she said, what has communication been like since my husband has deployed? What are forms of communication and how often do we talk? And some of these things, I don't know if I can answer because it might be against OPSEC rules um, as far as like how often we communicate. I don't know if that's something that I'm allowed to say. And so um, in this question that you asked, I'm gonna be very general about it. But communication with every branch of the military is different um, because, you know, my husband's on a ship and so he's not on land where there's service and, you know, you can call or Skype or, you know, whatever. And so each branch is going to be different um, in some kind of way. But for us, he is able to call when he ports somewhere. And it just depends on how long he ports so we're able to talk and sometimes ships port longer than others or port more times than others so if they port more then they're able to talk more but if they're out at sea they're not able to talk more and so this question is kind of hard but communication varies so just know that you are able to call them if they port um, and so just kind of have that conversation with them they usually know how many times they're going to port if they're on a ship um, before they leave for deployment 
And so have that conversation with them so that you can plan ahead for those things. As far as how often we talk, we don't ever talk on the phone because we can't because he's out at sea. But thanks to the 21st century, there is email. And I don't know about people on land because it's they can talk, like I said. But if your husband or boyfriend or whoever is on a ship, they are able to email you. And again, each job varies with how often they can email you. Some guys, um, they work at computers, and so they can email their significant other more often because they're on a computer. Other guys don't work on computers, and so they have to go find one, email them, blah, 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 and stuff like that. Um, but there is email communication, and so that has just been a blessing because letters, like I sent my husband a letter uh, two weeks after he left, and I just got his letter a few days ago. So it took about like four or five weeks before it got to me, which I know like shipping can vary. Some people have gotten them from two weeks. Some like the latest is usually six. Um, but it was a really long time. And with email, it could be like he emailed me one day, I email him back and he can't email me till like a week later or the next day or you know just like it kind of varies all over with how busy they are what their job is um the time difference because it's a time difference whenever they're all the way over there um and just kind of stuff like that so i can't really be too specific on that but know that you can email if they're on a ship and it's just like the greatest blessing because letters kind of suck you know, it's like, it's just snail mail. It just goes slow. So yeah, I don't know if that answered the question, but we have been able to talk, you know, more than if it was just letter, 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 letter. Um, so that's, that's been a blessing. So I hope that is kind of encouraging. <laughs> so the next question is from Stephanie King and she asks, do you and Connor want kids and how do you plan that around military life? And to speak for Connor, we both really, really want children. Um, he actually wants a child more than I want a child, to be honest. And we have wanted, like, he's wanted a child since we were young. Like, he knew that he wanted to marry me, and he knew that he wanted to have kids with me. So we, def we definitely do want children. Um, but when it comes to how to plan that around military life, I am very, not strict, <laughs> but I'm very, like, I will not have a child when you go on deployment like that is not something that i want to even consider um we are going to be extremely cautious um we'll do everything possible like i am not going to have a child during deployment um and i just say that because like if you are if you are going through deployment and you're pregnant or you have children like you are awesome but i cannot do that i refuse to do that and i feel like if I did do that, you know, God gives you the strength that you need during those moments. Um, but I just, I don't want to do that at all. Like, I do not want to do that. And so we were just very, very cautious. And what we have planned to do is, so in the military, they're trying to make it to where every three years um, they get deployed. So if he is deploying right now, then in three years will be his next deployment. And so we've talked about after this deployment, after he gets back, after we have a little bit of time for just us and just like, you know, being with each other, um, then we will start talking about having a baby. And so it's like, you really can't plan for when you're going to have a baby or how to have a baby in military life because it really, really is so, so hard. Um, but just be smart about it. Like, I encourage you to be smart about it and think, do I want to have a baby during deployment? Yes or no? No? Okay, then we need to be, like, serious about, like, preventing that. So, yeah, I don't want to, like, get to, This is just, like, a weird topic because it's, like, baby making. But, yeah, if you want to prevent it, prevent it. If you don't want to prevent it, don't prevent it. But there's there's really no easy way in in how to plan for a baby in military life. I think it's just acknowledging when is he going to get deployed? Okay, should we do it a year before that? Should we do it a year after that? Should we do it right after that? Like, 
you know, just planning that way, but being serious about your plans and not just being like, not irresponsible, but I don't know, but just be serious about your plan and have a plan in, in place and take extra precaution if you don't want to have a baby. Um, but yeah, so we definitely want babies. <laughs> if it was up to Connor, we would have five babies right now, but it's not up to him. So <laughs> we're planning and it may happen next year. So the next question is, what is your biggest fear as a military spouse? And aside from loneliness and like sadness and stuff like that, I think the biggest fear is the uncertainty. And it's so hard because you like, there's so many things to be uncertain about in the military. It's like, where are you going to move? Like what's going to happen to you on deployment? Are you going to be able to talk to me? Uh, what time are you coming home from work? Like you just never know. Um, just like all of these, all of these different things, like where are we going to live? Everything, like everything is so uncertain. And one of the things that I would tell you guys, um, specifically the ones that like are freaking out on the inside is you do not control the future at all. And that has have, had to be my inner peace, I guess, uh, because I know God controls the future and I know that he's the only one that knows the future, knows the past, knows the present, and he's the one that's taking care of all of our plans. And that gives me peace on the inside, knowing that I have no control over the future. Even if I plan something, it could possibly not happen. Like it could possibly, my plans could fall through. So for you guys that like freak out and you're like so uncertain about life, um, I totally understand where you are, but know that maybe like write down a little sticky, a little sticky note and just say, I do not control the future. Like you don't know what's going to happen, you know, and I think everything happens for a reason. And yeah, so that's definitely one of my biggest fears though is uncertainty. And so I have to like, I always have to remember to go back to that place of I don't control the future. But then my uncertainty comes back and then I like, it's just like this battle, this spiritual and, and flesh battle. But yeah, that would be my biggest fear. Okay, and so the last question is, what advice would you give to a newbie Milso? And I think my advice for all you newbies out there is you are not going to always have all the answers. Um, even two years later, I don't have all the answers. I finally memorized the military alphabet acronyms. I know all of them, but as far as the acronyms, I do not know all of them. I still don't know all of them. Um, I don't know all the resources that are out there. I don't know a lot of stuff. Um, and so know that you don't always have to have all the answers. You don't even have to go and look for the answers if you don't want to. If you wanna know things that are out there, look for them. Um, but it's not like life or death. You're not going to die if you don't know all the answers. It's just, it's definitely a learning process. And so don't try to learn everything at once. Enjoy the time that you have with your significant other. Don't fill it with arguments or social media. That's something that I do. I fill my time sometimes with social media instead of spending time with my husband. Um, and so that's been something that I've had to work on. And so focus on your relationship with Christ first and then focus on your relationship with him. And um, yeah, again, like you don't have to know all the answers. So yeah, that would be my advice for y'all. Um, and just have like this peace, just like invite peace into your life <laughs> because this life is so stressful. And if you let it, it will stress you out, freak you out, make you worried, make you cry. Just break you down. It will break you down. But the more peace you have, the more strength you have, the more that you can win this military lifestyle battle. So yeah, I hope this was like insightful in some way. And if you guys have more questions, you can always email me, Instagram message me, uh, write me a letter, whatever you want. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video.